Hey guys, today we are talking to you about genetic makeups and body types. What makes someone look so crazy? What makes someone's glutes so crazy? What makes someone just other? And we're gonna cover that today. Other. Because <laughs> Ashley's a little other herself. So, <laughs> <laughs> I'm an alien. She is. So we're talking I'm about an alien. basically how your builds, how your muscles, the origin of the insertion, how bubbly your muscles are, how high, how low, what's the differences between all of them, and what makes someone that look that you're really liking or not. Yes, I think that is such an interesting topic because a lot of people don't even know about muscle insertions and how that actually makes their body look or their muscle look. And let me use myself for example. Let's let's take a look at my calf, okay? And if you wanna kind of point it out, this is yeah. my calf and um, I would say I have a medium insertion Absolutely. for my calf, yeah. but somebody that has a high insertion, their calf would be more up here, and I guess a good example of that is if you ever see like sprinters or somebody with really high calves, um, that's, a, that's a small uh, muscle insertion high up. Yeah, and typically what happens with that, if you want to show it again, so if you see how her calves are kind of right in the middle, well, she's got a lot more muscle to build. And so when you have you know, more muscle to build than someone will be up here, of course the person with the, the shorter muscle insertion is gonna have a harder time building bigger calves. And then you also have girls that have calves that are basically way down here inserted and they look like about here. And you always, they say they look like they have thicker legs or thicker ankles, you know, the kinkle. <laughs> Maybe the kinkle girl. So differences for different people. So different training methods for different people. So someone with really high calves, maybe they can do more calf work to look the same as someone who has got really low calves who doesn't really need to do any calf work because they might be too much if they do. One of the other groups... Uh, is that, will you want to do shoulders? Sure. Okay, shoulders. I don't have the best shoulders, <laughs> I will be honest with you guys. And the reason why, I have a lower muscle insertion, which makes my delts look kind of flat. Yeah, so when you're talking about differences in muscles and how they're built, like the muscle belly, like how how round is the muscle belly? How how easy it is for her to get that capping, that really big capping? Well, for her, it's just not something that's where she's able to get a huge cap, shoulder cap. She doesn't have that that bubbly muscle where you see in these some bodybuilders like a flex wheeler or something like that. So for her, her muscle insertion is way down here. Um, actually, it's pretty low on here, so it's harder for someone to build the longer the insertion. So you always like hear about tall guys and like, oh, I'm tall, so I have a hard time building muscle. So um, with that, you know, it's it is a little got to take you a little bit longer because you have more muscle to actually get bigger versus someone who's shorter who is have more rounder with their muscles that they can pop out a little bit more. So that is definitely something that is a is a true thing. So that just means I need to work extra hard on my shoulders, which I do. We train a few days a week shoulders because they need a little help. My little noodle arms <laughs> need a little help. But on the contrary, have you seen my hands? Hamstrings are lit. My hamstrings <laughs> are lit. You know what's funny is I just realized I went on the other side of you completely unnecessarily because you have two shoulders. So hamstrings, you know, really round, really bubbly hamstrings. Yeah, she's earned them from years of track and gymnastics, but also weightlifting. But really round, bubbly hamstrings, and everyone's like, how do you get those round, bubbly hamstrings? Well, some of it is genetic. Some of it is God-given, right? Where she can, <laughs> where she is able to get rounder muscles than, than someone. But it doesn't mean you can't get your best. It just means that some people are built a different way. Mm -hmm. With Ashley's glutes, if you look at her from profile, if you want to stand that way, really round glutes with high profile, high projection out, but not a really low insertion. If you see people with a really low insertion of their glute, they're going to have generally longer, deeper glute tie-ins than someone who has got a more poppy glute more round, shorter insertion. So she's gonna have more, <laughs> more pop to her glute with the higher insertion versus someone who's got more glutes uh, tie-in with a longer insertion. So everyone's made a little different. Work to, to be your best. Be your best. If you guys wanna know more on this topic, we actually recently did a podcast, so you should check it out. We go really in depth on your structure and what your pros and cons are according to your body type. The topic is realistic expectations and genetic limitations. So make sure you check it out and thank you guys for watching.